Hello everyone, last week Stability AI announced the release of Stable Diffusion Excel version 1 and today I want to test it together with you. We can learn a lot of things about this new version by reading the paper or even reading you know, the main article on the Stability AI website, which is this one. And from here we can learn that not only Stable Diffusion is way better compared to the previous Stable Diffusion versions, but also compared to other open source models like Midjourney. So today we are going to test as well Stable Diffusion Excel versus mid-journey. From this article from the Stability AI website we learn that colors have improved a lot. There is better contrast, better lighting, shadows and even if we use a very simple prompt, a super realistic, photorealistic picture should come out. Regarding the architecture, we know already that Stable Diffusion Excel is composed by two models. We have the base model and then we have the refiner model. The base model is standalone, meaning that we can use it by itself. We don't need anything else. The refiner model can be used only with the base model because it consists on an additional stage in the image generation process and it's similar to the image to image so it's going to take as input the image generated by the base model and through the image to image technique it's going to generate a new image based on the input image but more detailed so it should definitely be better. The number of parameters within the model has increased a lot, three times compared to the previous Stable Diffusion 1.5 or 2.0. So the model we are going to download, it's way heavier compared to previous, but this doesn't mean that we cannot run it easily on our platform. Actually, it's completely fine with Windows, it's completely fine with Cloud, because it just needs GPU with 8 GB of VRAM. So I would definitely recommend it to use it on Windows and Cloud. I wouldn't recommend it on Mac. It obviously depends on which Mac you're using. But if the performance is too slow, I would recommend you to use Cloud. So Colab or Rampod or Paperspace or whichever. For this tutorial, I'm going to use Automatic 11.11 to run Stable Diffusion Excel. If you don't know how to install or update Automatic 11.11, I made a video. If you don't fancy Automatic 11.11 but you want to use ConfUI, I also made another video on how to use Stable Diffusion Excel within ConfUI. So let's start. The first thing we need to do is to download the base and the refiner model from Hugging Face. So for that we need to go onto this page which is the Stability AI main page and we need to then dive into Stable Diffusion Excel base. I'm going to share all of the links down in the descriptions. You then need to go into the Files and Versions tab. You scroll down and you can download the model. So they have released this one yesterday. I haven't had a look at this one. Anyway, what I did, I downloaded this one, the SDXL base 1.0, and then I downloaded the variational auto encoder from here. The one I downloaded is this one here. Okay, so this is for downloading the base model. You can download the refiner as well in here and you download this one. Also in this case, I downloaded this one and then I used the variational autoencoder uh, downloaded from here, which is exactly the same as the previous one. So it doesn't matter which one you download, it, it should be the same. So once you downloaded all of these files, I have copy and pasted or drag and dropped the model, say inside Stable Diffusion Web UI models and then Stable Diffusion. And here you can see my SDXL base 1.0 and SDXL refiner 1.0. And I have moved my variational autoencoder in here. So Stable Diffusion Web UI models variational autoencoder and SDXL VAE, variational autoencoder. Cool. So you're ready to go. Let's initialize stable diffusion. And this is the main interface. We go into the text to image for now, and then we want to change the model to base, this one. 
then you want to change the stable diffusion variational autoencoder with the stable diffusion Excel variational autoencoder you just downloaded. And then we can change some settings, like for example, we can actually we can try different settings for the sampling method. In theory, what I read is that this one we usually use it doesn't work very well, but we can test it today. But DPM is way better. Sampling steps, it seems that 30 works better. Width and height should be at least 1024 by 1024 because the model was trained on uh, this image resolution. I'm happy with the rest. Then let's type something, let's test for realism, right? Let's uh, generate a portrait of a woman. So we can type a woman with long hair actually a portrait of a woman with long hair blonde green eyes let's try that and then in the negative prompt maybe we can add some something like that just for now to see what comes out and then we'll improve our our prompt description and then we can use the x y z plot to check for different sampling methods so here you can change the sampler and then we can use this one. We can use DPM and I will use the DIM. Let's see. And we press generate. So with the plot, uh, we are going to create three different pictures with the same settings, but different sampling method. I just got an exception. Sampler DDM is not supported for SD Excel. I didn't know that, okay. I will investigate this, I'm not sure about, because I, I'm pretty sure that I used that before on ConfUI, but maybe I'm wrong. So for now I'll just remove it and then I'll generate again. We can see those that we have created already and it looks pretty good. And this is only the, the base model, you know? So ideally when we move this image into the refiner, it's going to look even better. nice okay this is the second one created the dpm sde seems better compared to the to the one that we usually use for a stable diffusion 1.5 pretty good what do you think okay so now what i will do i will move into the image to image tab i'm going to upload one of the pictures we just generated i could do that directly from here if you have just one picture so you click on send to image to image but in this case i have two images i have agreed so it's not gonna work so i will go into image to image i'll press here and i will upload one of the pictures i can upload this one and then what we have to do we need to change the model to refiner scroll down let's see the settings we can change the sampler to dpm again we can keep the same size i'm happy with that and then we need to change the denoise strength now this denoising strength is really important. The higher it is, the more different, the more creative, let's say, the picture will be to the one we just input, which is this one. The lower, the best in this case, because we are going to have basically the same picture, but slightly modified to add additional details, right? So, for example, let's, uh, um, let's, let's test it. So we can, again, let's go into X, Y, Z plot and I'm gonna show you this denoising. So we can choose denoising and then we can use 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. Then we go up and we press generate. And these are the pictures created. So 0.2 denoising seems to be better. And you see how it changes. Uh, like the higher the denoising, the more different is the image to the original one. So here uh, something has changed in the first case, but not much. 
in the noise in 0.2 we can see more detail the skin looks better the lips looks better the eyes looks better it's very nice in my opinion and then the higher the denoise so it's already 0.5 it seems already similar but you know the style is changing and the noise 0.8 is completely different so when you use the refiner i would recommend to use a value between 0.1 and 0.3 now let's add more information inside the prompt and let's see what happens so for example i can go into realistic vision and copy the negative prompt and I'll paste it in here. I need to remove bad dream and a realistic dream because it's not, they're not gonna work. And then we can maybe add some information, something like that. Then I think I'm going to change this to TPM and then I'm going to get rid of the X, Y, Z plot and then I'm going to press generate again. Oh, actually, I forgot something very important, which is changing the model again to the base model. Let's press generate. And it looks very nice. Something that you may have noticed though, is that I used green eyes. And there is obviously a concept bleeding here because you can see that the background is green as well and the shirt is green as well. And this is one of the limitation of this model. But yeah, this is, um, this is still an issue. And we, we had this with previous table diffusions as well and also with other models uh, like Midjourney. So it's, um, it's obviously a common issue, right? So let's keep this image for now and let's send it to image to image where we need to change the model to refiner. I'm going to use a denoise of 0.20 and then we press on generate. Oh, I forgot to remove the, the plot. <laughs> we are going to compare different denoising, which is always good anyway. And what do you think? I think it, it's pretty, pretty amazing. So I think the best is 0.2. You can see the skin and the eyes, everything look way better. Okay, now that we have seen, we have tested the realism for Stable Diffusion XL, which I think it's amazing, has improved a lot. I want to compare this with Midjourney. So let's go into Midjourney and let's uh, type exactly the same. So with Midjourney as well, we don't have to use very detailed description for getting a good one. So for now, I just typed a portrait of a woman with long hair, blonde, green eyes, realistic, detailed skin, cinematic, AK. I'm going to press enter. And here is the result. So it's pretty good, right? Also in this case, we can see that there, there's concept bleeding, but maybe a little bit less because at least the background, it's a little bit different uh, although I can see still a little bit of green in this picture and also maybe in this one is like dark greenish color and the shares of all of them it's uh, it's green they're both pretty good I don't know which one you prefer this is obviously a matter of taste but maybe I prefer mid journey I don't know okay now let's let's test for the hands, yeah? So I'm going to write a woman holding a flower. And let's see what happens with the hands, if something is going to change. I need to change the checkpoint to base. I know that this is still a limitation, so let's see. Okay, it's not showing the hands, so maybe let's try with a portrait instead of a square layout, and maybe we can add hands here. So let's see. Having put hands in the prompt description, it's giving focus at the hands in, in this case. We should use some weights in our prompt if we don't want this to happen, really. I Honestly, I thought that this issue of generating cropping image was gone with this new version because they have added a condition in from, for cropping parameters. But it seems like it's not working uh, in, in my case. As you can see, the hands is still an issue. So we found the concept bleeding and hands in this case. But this is not an, a new thing, right? We, we know this, they are mentioning this in the, in the paper. So uh, fair enough, uh, they're still work in progress for this. Okay, so we checked for the realism of faces and people we checked for hands let's check for landscapes now i'm just gonna write forest and lake 
I'm going to remove a little bit of those things I don't need. And I'm gonna press generate. Actually, I'm going to use, I want the landscape, right? So I have swapped the width with the height and I'm going to generate the landscape picture. Looks pretty nice. I like the shadows on the lake as well. They, they look pretty good. And uh, yeah, let's move this on to the refiner and let's see what happens. So send to image to image. Let's change the model again. Okay. Then we use the noising equal to 0.2 and we press generate. Looks pretty nice. Obviously, I didn't describe anything, I just wrote text and like, so you may get nicer pictures if you, if you add, you know, more details, but this looks pretty good to me. And I want to generate the image with stable diffusion 1.5. Let's use the variational autoencoder in this case, I want to use MSE. Change this back to 20. Let's change the resolution to 512. Let's use a different sampling meter. Let's see. So we have adjusted a little bit the settings and uh, but you can see that the result is still not good. You have a random person in the middle of the picture and well, yeah, it's not great, right? So we can definitely say that Stable Diffusion Excel is way better. Now, Another limitation is the text in the images, which is still not great. Maybe we can have a look at it as well. So let's go back on the automatic 11.11. I changed the model to Excel base 1.0 and the variational autoencoder to the Excel variational autoencoder. I changed the prompt with a road sign pointing to Hawaii. Then let's change this to 1024 by 1024 again. I'm happy with the other settings and maybe we can change the sampling method to DPM. Let's see. And we press generate. Let's generate more than one because it's very random. Yeah, there is no text. I was wondering why. So it's because I have here text and watermark. Actually, just text. Maybe we can remove it. Also, this is doesn't matter really. Yeah, the rest seems good, sorry. So let's generate again. Obviously it takes a little bit of time because number of parameters is higher and the resolution of the image I am generating is higher compared to Stable Diffusion 1.5. But fair enough if we get better result. I found that ConfUI is quicker. So if you are a Mac user, you may want to go and try ConfUI. Oh, wow. So obviously it's not great in some pictures, but in others it's nailing it. Like I actually have Hawaii, which is nice. So I was expecting a bad result in this case, but then I'm actually surprised that we actually have the text Hawaii in the picture and it looks pretty good. Again, I'm just looking at the text, right? Okay, Hawaii in my journey is not great instead. Overall, the picture looks better, true, but the text is not great at all. Like we cannot see Hawaii in any of these pictures. So in this case, I think Stable Diffusion is, is better. So we have seen how Stable Diffusion Excel works on Automatic 11.11, and we can definitely say that the realism of the picture has improved a lot compared to previous table diffusion. I'm not completely sure if this is better than Midjourney, but um, probably they are comparable. And again, this is based on personal taste. It's based on judgment, right? From the main paper, they are now working on a new control net specifically for this model. And I'm looking forward to it. And that's it for today. I hope this was useful. Thank you very much for watching and see you at the next video. Bye.